Today is hot, and I mean stupid hot. It is about 40 degrees Celsius or about 110 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm actually lying. About a week ago, it was that temperature, and I thought it was a good time then to do some testing on these beds to see which one's better, a constant flood grow bed or a siphon grow bed in keeping the systems cooler. Now, I've seen online that there is Pretty much a general consensus that on a really hot day, pull the bell siphon out of your system and let it run constant flood, because apparently that's the better way to go. But I haven't actually tested it and I haven't seen anybody else test it. So I have two beds here. There's one next to each other and I figured it was a good time to try out and see which one's which. So I have a computer hooked up to one Arduino, which has temperature probes going into both of the beds. I'm gonna pull bell siphon out of one of them. It's the same water flow going into each of them and it is pretty much identical in both ways. They are both in full sunlight, so they'll get the full front of the sun coming down on them. And I figured it was a good chance to try out and see which one is better. And do a bit of myth testing in the process. So I thought at the same time, I'll do a couple if different ones. Another one that I've seen floating around is that you get a three liter tub of ice and you dunk it in an IBC and that will cool it down. But I'm gonna test that one too. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna go through a couple of different things. I am gonna show you what actually really works and what you can use to cool down the system and which one is the best out of all of them. So while I let that test go, I am going, well, I've already done it so I know the answers because I know the answers, but I'm going to show you the IBC ice bottle into the tank and then show you why that sort of stuff, oh, if it doesn't work, because I don't know that one yet. So I'm going to get some testing, get some water, and then we're going to try, try it out. So the next myth that I see come along a lot is popping a three litre jug of ice into an IBC. Apparently the cooling energy from that is going to cool down the system enough to get an appreciable difference in the water and keep the fish safe. I've seen it popped on the, I've seen it written on the forums a lot so I thought I might myth bust this one as well. I have a little temperature probe that's hooked into my computer and you can see the temperature that it's currently sitting on here, which I think is around 31 degrees. And here I have 30 grams of ice, which if you work it out and scale it down is the same amount as putting a three liter jug of ice into an IBC. So I'm gonna drop my ice straight in there and let that cool down. Now it's only small ice cubes and it doesn't make any difference if it's one big solid clump of ice or small ones because it has the same amount of cooling energy inside of it and will cool them down about the same. So while it's cooling down and while I leave the little display here up, I'm going to go through some of the other things about cooling down your aquaponic system and why some of it works and why some of it doesn't. And the first thing we need to look at is the grow bed. So I'll take you guys over to the grow beds and continue. We have the kitty cat. This is the elusive cat plant and the cat plant has run off. Okay, cat plant has gone. So what we have here is basically what I like to think of as a massive heat sink. And what is heat sinking is the environment around us. So heat energy, cooling energy goes straight into these rocks and gets sucked into the water. And it happens relatively quickly and relatively effectively. And it works in two ways. The biggest myth that I saw popping online is, sorry about the birds if they're being quite noisy because they're having a bit of serenading each other, which, Australia. But what we have here is basically massive heat sinks. The water goes into these beds and coats around it and combines with the heat energy that's coming from the sun above us. And basically what's happening is that it's transferring the energy from the sun and from the radiation and the heat straight into the fish tank. And it works really, really well in that part of factor. So it'll cool it down and it will heat it up along with the energy outside, which can be a good or bad thing. And it's basically something you've got to deal with in aquaponics. So I'll go back to our little test because I have a feeling the ice is pretty much done. And my ice has pretty much finished dissolving. And if you have a look up there, you can see the live temperatures. And I had a quick look in there and they has gone down by probably about 0 0.0, shush, look at these birds. And it has gone down by about 0.05%, which might not sound like particularly much, but it is a difference. But you've also got to remember, outside in the environment around us, we have cooler temperatures. So it's not a 40 degree day and the heat is going to evaporate out of this very small bucket of water. Now, if we upscaled it, so say I've got an IBC here and I put the 30 grams worth of ice in there, then you're going to notice that it's going to do absolutely nothing at all. We have got a little bit of cooling energy out of this. I wouldn't say enough to really warrant doing it in the first place, but we have a little bit of cooling energy that's transferred into here. And if we scale it up, so say we're talking about 
a 10,000 litre tank. It's going to take a hell of a lot more energy to be able to cool down the tank or heat it up in any depreciable way because we're going to need the sun building down on it or a nice cool day to be able to do it because the more water there is the more stable the temperature is going to be just over a long term they eventually will heat up they eventually will cool down but it's going to take a lot longer for that to happen so if you're in an area that snows snows and those sort of fun things the more water you've got the more longer it's going to take for that water to be able to freeze have a look at a big lake how long that takes to freeze over versus a small little bird bath in the backyard and you'll see the difference in how that all works now there are some commercial products that do this there are water chillers that you can attach to an aquaponic system or an aquaculture system that work and they work very well but they do have the down point down points because you can't transfer the t energy without without putting energy into it. So when we're talking about an uh, aquaponic, when you're talking about a fish cooler, the energy we are talking about is electronic energy. And it costs a fortune to run some of these ones, like a lot of money to be able to run them just off the energy bills and to buy them in the first place. Now, I've seen a couple people that have gotten coils of black tubing and put them inside of a fridge or a freezer and let them run and then pump the water through it. It will work. It will cool the water as it goes in, but those fridges usually aren't made for that sort of cooling. And the condensers inside of it aren't made to run that hard for that long, and they will eventually burn out. But if you've got an emergency thing, you need to be able to cool it down, then run some black tube and pump the water through it, and it will work. It will cool it down. Just watch the fridge, and hopefully it won't burn out on you. But neither of them are the thing that I'd recommend for somebody in a backyard system. The thing that I'd recommend is a bucky shower. And I'm not talking about the gross thing with a whole lot of dudes on porn websites. Um, it's basically several shelves and then water trickles down in between it. And then air flows through it and it works as an evaporative cooler. The same way you would on somebody's roof and that sort of stuff. So basically how it works is the water evaporates out as it flows up and then the heat energy evaporates out with the evaporative cooling, which is basically how it works. And they do work quite well but they do have some downsides. In a human environment, they won't work as well. So if you're somewhere like Queensland or Thailand or something that has a naturally human environment, they won't work as well, but they will work. But you just got to test it and see how well it does. So I've kept you guys going for long enough. So let's see how the experiment went between the two beds. So cooling or siphon and which one's which. Okay, so this is the beds that I tried it on. This one and the one behind it. So I showed a quick clip of when I put them in there in the first place, but I tried it in two different ways. So well, I got mentioned out to me that this bed here is actually made out of a white gravel and won't suck in the media, the heat as much as the bed next to it, which has red scoria. So the darker color will naturally color, take in more heat and heat up the water a little bit more. So I did it two ways. I did it twice. I took the siphon out of this one and then I took the siphon out of that one and ran the test twice to see which one was which. And the test results were very, very conclusive. I can officially confirm, at least in my system, that the siphon bed is cooler than the constant flood. So when you've seen it written that you should pull your siphon out on a really hot day to conserve energy, it is crap. Basically what I think is happening in here is when the, when the water floods out, the water that's left on the rocks is evaporating out as well and cooling down the system. And it's sucking more air in, which is cooling it down as well, and cooling down the rocks in each cycle. Because one thing I found is that there's a 0.025% difference in the water going in the constant flood and the water going out. So there's a lot more heat going into the constant flood than there is a siphon. So I call that Miss Busted. And yeah, so I was quite confused about this one because I wasn't sure how well it would work. And there is a massive difference in the two temperatures. It was very conclusive in my eyes. And yeah, so I have a puppy dog down here. Hold on. He likes to get in every video. He likes to get in every video. And I'm going to give him some grums and... See? Grums. I'm going to give him some grums and get back to editing this video. So, I hope you guys got something out of this and enjoyed the video. And I'll have more coming up. So, if it's the first one of mine that you've seen, make sure you subscribe and keep tuned for cool stuff coming out soon. So, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Have some more grums. Come on. Grum it up. Grum it up. Get it in. Come on. And that is my dog. He's a Come on. <laughs>